the latest release of macOS beta is out and today we look at five new features or changes that are coming along with this update. Stick around. We are just around the corner from the official release of macOS 11, also known as Big Sur, and we know there are tons of updates and features coming along with it. Now in today's video, I wanted to talk about five of those new features or changes that I think are worth noting, so let's go ahead and jump right in. We're going to start with the user interface as it grabs your attention right off the bat when you get started. You're going to see a lot of UI changes throughout some of these other features. Once you've gotten logged in, as you can see, the menu bar at the top has gotten a facelift. If we go down to the dock, you can see that the dock has slightly changed as far as visuals as well as some of the other apps, and they've all gotten some type of facelift. Now again, as we go through some of the other features in this uh, video, you're gonna see some of the UI changes that were made along the way. Next up is we have the all new control center. If you go up on your menu bar here at the top, just to the left of your time, you've got what looks to be like two little toggle switches, and this is going to be your control center. If you click on that, you can see things like your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, AirDrop, Do Not Disturb. You can change your keyboard brightness, dis display brightness, sound, and it's all kind of compiled into this one central location and reminds me a lot of a control center that you would see on the iOS devices. Most of the modules can be removed or added into the control center within the settings, all you need to do is go up into the system preferences, like so, and you're going to want to go to the dock and menu bar here, and it's going to load up all of the preferences. You can see that you've got the control center right here, we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and if you click on these, you can decide whether you want it to show in the control center or if you want it to show in the menu bar like you had it before. Scrolling through the list, again, you can combine most of this stuff into the control center, which makes it really easy to organize and keep everything in a central location. Although there are things like the Spotlight, Siri, and Time Machine that are a menu bar only item. Um, and so you'll have to kind of pick and choose on which ones you want in there. The widgets and notifications area has now been combined into a single location as well as got one of those UI facelifts that we were talking about earlier. To find that, again, just go up and left click on the time and you can see you've got your widgets here. Now, the old widgets that were in there, they did get a facelift and, a, and kind of a refresh and we also got some new widgets added. To change the widgets, come on down and left click on edit widgets and you can see the new interface allows us to kind of scroll through and choose whichever ones that we like. So if you look at this up next right here, you can now choose a small, medium, or large style widget, and you'll get a graphical representation of what it's going to look like when it's within your uh, widget bar. So once you found one that you like, all you need to do is either click the green little plus right here, or you can click and drag it into your widget bar. And of course, if you wanna remove one, all you need to do is click the little minus up in the top left of that widget, and that's gonna remove it, and then you can click on done to confirm the widget change. Looks like we're gonna be seeing some enhancements on Safari when comparing it to Chrome or Firefox. Uh, looks like we're gonna be seeing about a 50% reduction in load times on certain websites, and then depending on if you're watching videos or just browsing the internet, we could see upwards of one to three hours extra of battery life when doing one of those tasks. So nobody's ever gonna complain about having more battery life and making things a little bit more efficient. So hopefully we actually see those. The last one, and I think the most important change that's coming is the updates to the privacy policy. Apple has made privacy information on the app very easy to read, similar to what they call the nutrition label-like information, where devs will now self-report their privacy practices, which means devs now indicate what type of data their app may collect, such as location, usage data, contact information, etc. Overall, I'm pretty excited about this update. There's a lot of cool new updates and features that are coming along with it, and I think you guys will also enjoy them as well. I have been running the beta build for about a week now as my main operating system, and so far it's been a pretty stable process. So that's hopefully paving the way for a nice smooth launch. I will be posting a link down below that does include all of the features and updates that are coming along with macOS 11, as well as all of the compatible devices that will be getting the update as well. So be sure to check out those links in the video description below. 
Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this week's video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. I certainly appreciate your guys' support. I hope you're getting something out of these videos. And if you are, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, ring that bell so you guys don't miss out on any type of future content. And we will see you on the next one. Peace.